hello guys welcome to a new video and in this new video we are going to go over of section four which is secure routing and switching for the CCNA security exam and we are going to go over describing what max spoofing is describe cam table overflows and also we are going to go over and describe CDP LLDP recon so we have gone over describing the um, on the video before we went over describing ARP spoofing we went over also also the one that we did we did ARP spoofing and we did DHCP spoofing and then after we went over describing those two what we did was we implemented DHCP snooping and we also implemented dynamic ARP inspection and also we went over some implement the poor security stuff so if you haven't seen my video, go ahead and do that. Um, as you can see, we are almost done with this um, certification. Um, so let's go ahead and start with this video. And we have a, um, I have a PowerPoint right here that I put together. So I'm gonna go over, like I said, max spoofing. And what is max spoofing? Well, max spoofing is a technique for ch changing a factory assigned MAC address, which MAC stands for Media Access Control of a network interface on a networked device and the process of it is the process of masking a MAC address um, is known as a spoofing it's known as MAC spoofing essentially MAC spoofing entails changing the computer's identity for any reason and it is relatively easy to do I'm not have I have done this on my Linux device um, where you can change the MAC address to whatever you want um, and you can do with several tools out there that you can find that you can easily find on the internet you can just install it and just change the mac address to whatever you want and that is called mac mac spoofing really easy um, and now uh, we are going to go ahead and describe what cam table overflow is um, if you know from the ccna routing and switching if you took that before um, watching this video because this is on the CCNA security exam, you know what the count table is and how it works. It's just basically the MAC address table. And there's an attack that is called a CAM overflow. And this occurs when an attacker connects to a single or multiple switch ports and then runs a tool that mimics the existence of thousands of random MAC addresses on those switch ports. Um, the switch enters this into the CAM table and eventually the cam table fills to capacity, right? So it fills all the way up where it cannot take any more MAC addresses. Um, and when a switch is in this table, as you can see, no more new MAC addresses can be learned. Therefore, the switch starts to flood any traffic for new hosts out of all the ports on the switch, which is not good. Um, a cam overflow attack turns a switch into basically a hub, which enables the attacker to eavesdrop on a conversation and perform man in the middle attacks. A common tool that performs um, cam overflows is MacOff and is part of the DS, um, DSN or DS sniff set of tools. This tool generates hundreds and of thousands of random MAC addresses and flows the, this out onto the network. This is um, useful, this useful tool is for testing to see if your switch infrastructure is susceptible to cam overflow attacks and also if you want to just go ahead and do and be one of those guys that run this on your um, work network you can go ahead and run it and if you if it breaks the network they might fire you or they might give you a raise just for letting them know that this um, that this could happen to their network by a hacker right so i'm not going to do this because i don't want to break any of my stuff but as you can see you can um, perform this by just downloading and installing a tool that is called mac off um, in a way to fight cam overflow um, what you could do is just do port security on a cisco switch which enables you to control how the switch port handles the learning and storing of MAC addresses on a peer interface basis. The main use of this command is to set a limit to the maximum number of concurrent MAC addresses that can be learned and allocated to the individual switch ports, right? So what you could do on the switch is you can do turn those um, 
on a switch for mode access because you can only do it on the mode access you can go ahead and turn on the switchboard port security and just by doing a switchboard port security it turns on that switchboard port security um, and then after that what you could do is on on that interface um, after you make the uh, switch port as an access mode port you can just turn it on by switch port um, port security and then you can just set up um, the maximum number of MAC addresses that can be learned from that port so you can set up the maximum to like five IP addresses therefore if somebody is going to Mac off it's only going to um, learn for five MAC addresses and if you learn more than five MAC addresses there is a violation that you can set up the violations are either restrict protect or shut down by default the if you don't change the the violation what it does is that it um, if you don't change the 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 violation and it just set for the default the default is shut down so if it learns more than five MAC addresses what is going to happen is it's going to put your um, switch or that switch interface into the error disable and it's going to shut it down and nothing else is going to be able no traffic is going to be able to get through that traffic via that interface port so if you don't want that to be the shutdown you can just go ahead and um, do a switch port mode uh, you can do a switch port port security and then after that you can do violation and you can change the violation to either restrict or protect I believe to when you do a restrict what's going to happen is it's going to just deny the packet and then it's going to create, create a syslog and it's going to send a syslog message to whatever your um, if you have configured SNMP it's going to send it to that SNMP server then when you set up to protect it's not going to do anything it's just going to drop the packet right so if a machine starts um, starts broadcasting multiple MAC addresses in what appears to be a cam overflow attack the default action of port security is to shut down like I said the switch interface although you can configure the switch just to discard any future layer 2 frames received from the bugger's MAC address right like I said you can set up to either restrict or protect and the way you could, that you could do that is by configuring the port security, like I said, right? Uh, and you must configure port security at the interface configuration level on a Cisco IOS switch. And you need to allow port security on a static access port, right? You cannot do it on trunk ports. It's only access ports, rather than dynamic access or trunk ports, right? And another attack that, you, that could happen on your network is the when you have CDP or LLDP. Um, enable on your devices so what happens is that when the Cisco discovery protocol or the link layer discovery protocol are enabled on a Cisco IOS network devices what happens is that the devices announce themselves to their neighbors um, by default Cisco devices send a CDP announcement out every out every interface once per minute if they receive a CDP announcement they store that information in a table with a whole time of three minutes right and the potential problem for the CDP and LLDP is that they, they provide an easy recon vector to any attacker with an Ethernet connection. When the switch sends a CDP or LLDP announcement out of a port where a workstation is connected, the workstation normally ignores, it, it ignores the, the, the packet. But if we have a tool such as like Wireshark, an attacker can capture and analyze the CDP or LLDP announcement included in the CDP or LLDP data is a model number and operating system version of the switch an attacker can then use this information to look up published vulnerabilities that are associated with that operating system version and potentially follow up with an exploit of that vulnerability which is not it's not good at all so the only thing that you could do is you can just go ahead and disable the protocol you can disable it globally with the no CDP run and for the CDP um, protocol or you can do a no LLDP run command and what that's going to do is it's going to disable globally but if you want to disable per interface basis you can just go to the interface and just do a no CDP enable and then for the LLDP you can do a no LLDP enable commands which is fairly easy so a lot of um, companies what they do is they have this 
um, disabled by default and whenever they need it, like say they need an interface one, what they do is they just enable it for that um, interface and whenever they're done, they just disable it right away because they don't want attackers to um, have this information um, because with this information, like I said, they can just search what um, vulnerability they can find and then they can just run it on your network and mess all your network up, okay? And this is it for this video. On the next video, we are going to go over VLAN happen and we're going to do some, um, we're going to be doing some um, labbing with this VLAN happen and we're also going to do some VLAN double tagging as well. So stay tuned with more videos. And if you guys enjoyed this video, if uh, you can just go ahead and follow me on Twitter, right? If you go to my Twitter account, which is um, CCNA Daily Tips, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And if you don't have a Twitter account, I know that you have an um, email account. If you have an email account, go ahead and create a Twitter account and then follow me at CCNA Daily Tips. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.